Welcome everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tudor and today we're going to be creating gothic columns with archers. I'll be showing you the quickest and easiest techniques which you can then refine to push your 3D models even further. Now before we continue, if you like this video then give me a like please and if you like this kind of teaching style then check out the links down below where I have hundreds of hours of Blender courses with which will help you on your journey to become a professional artist. So with all that said, let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is just click anywhere on the viewport here just to get rid of this splash screen. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, left click the camera, press the delete button to actually delete that. Left click the actual um, light here, press the delete button and then click on our cube. Now we're actually going to keep our cube. I know it's uh, crazy that we're actually keeping this cube, but we are. Then we're going to press the tab button to go into actual edit mode. Come up to the top left hand side here, click on edge select, grab this edge, press control B. And what that's going to do, if you pull it out now, is enable you to actually bevel this edge of this cube. Now, now you've got it beveled, you'll actually see down the bottom left hand side, we have a menu. If we click that open, if I move around or zoom in and out, it will not take away this menu. But if I click anywhere on any of these other parts, this menu will disappear. So just bear that in mind. Now what we want to do is I want to turn up these segments first. So if I turn these up to something like eight, you'll see now they've got a nice bevel going off, but it's not exactly what we want. We actually want to make this into an actual Gothic column. So what we'll do is we'll come down to the bottom right hand side here where we've got custom and you'll see that each one of these segments is represented by these little dots on here. Now if I go in a little bit and actually grab this first one, pull it up, grab the second one, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it into a load of steps like so, and you'll see that if I just pull this one out a little bit more, that now if I press tab, we've actually got that actual gothic look that we're actually going for, and we've done it really, really fast. And I recommend you mess around with this um, on your bevel just to get that look that you're actually looking for. All right, so now it's not looking really like a column at the moment, it's a little bit short. So let's go in, press the tab button and come to the bottom with face select, grab this face on the bottom and then we need to pull it down. Now you'll notice at the moment we've got no move tool. So let's press shift space bar, come to move tool and then let's pull it down. And now we're starting to actually get our column. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this in. So I'm going to press I and bring it in a little bit like so. Now you will notice if I keep bringing this in, it's actually going to break the mesh like so, and we don't really want that. So just bring it in so far. And then so that doesn't happen, what you can do is you can press the S button to bring it in and make it a little bit smaller. And then you can actually move it around to where you actually want it. So that's just a way to make that easier to actually do that so that we don't actually break our mesh. I also recommend at this point that we mark our seams. And the reason for that is if I press Control E, come down to where it says mark seams, and then you'll end up with this red line going around. And now what I want to do is I want to triangulate this faces. And the reason I want to do that at the moment, this is an actual engon, and we don't want that. An engon is when you've got too many sides, you should keep it at three or four just to make the mesh nice and clean. So let's right click, come down to triangulate faces. Now, if I click off of this, and you'll notice when I try and grab a part of this, I've got to actually select all these now. So to stop that happening, we marked our seams and now I can go in, press the L button, and now you'll notice it only selects up to those actual sides where the actual seams are marked, and that's exactly what we want. Now let's work on our actual arch now. So what we'll do is we'll press tab, and you'll notice that our center of origin is right in the center of the actual world. And if I press shift space bar, come to move, so bring in our move tool or move gizmo and pull it to the side. You'll notice our center of origin moves over there. Now we do want it in the middle to actually create our arch. So there is a simpler way to do it. Well, there's two ways actually. The first one is if you right click and you set origin to 3D cursor. And now I'll pull that origin right back in the center. Now there is another way of course, if you press tab and you grab everything with the A button, and you move this over, you'll notice that the center of origin doesn't move when I'm actually in edit mode. So that's something that's just uh, to bear in mind and it'll make it easier when you're actually creating things like this. Okay, so now let's create our actual arch. So I'm gonna come in, grab a face, press L button to grab everything. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the left hand side and if you come down you'll notice one that says spin, click that on and then you'll end up with something like this. Now at the top um, left hand side here now you'll see you've got all of these axes. If you put this on the X axis, press 3 on the number pad, you'll see now that if I grab this I can pull this out all the way over to here and you can see now that we've got that really really nice um, actual arch looking gothic style column. Now obviously this is not finished because we need one the other side as well so the easiest way to do this I found is actually come in while we've got our center origin in the center come over to the spanner on the right hand side add modifier and you're going to come down and bring in a mirror. Let's put the mirror on the Y click the X off and now we've got something like this and now obviously what we need to do is we need to join these together. So while we've got this uh, edge here selected what I can do now is and come in press shift space bring in my move tool and now I can pull these together like so and you'll notice that they go past each other at the moment that's because we just need to click uh, clipping on and now what I can do is I can come in and bring these together and they'll join together really really nicely. I can also pull them up a little bit just to make that kind of really really nice arch look where it just kind of dips up just that little bit. Alright so now we've done that let's press the uh, tab button come over press Control A and just actually apply that mirror modifier. Now what I want to do is I want to smooth all this off so I'm going to right click shade smooth come over to my little triangle normal auto smooth and you will end up with this line down here and the reason for that is simply because we've still got in if I just hide this with H we've still got in our actual um, center support and we don't actually want that. So the easiest way to do uh, get rid of this line is to press Alt, Shift and click and what that'll do is it'll enable you to select all these going all the way around, press H to hide it and now what we're going to do is just delete this. So if I come in because I mark my seam as well I can press L then I can press delete, come down to faces, delete that out of the way, Alt H just to bring that back tab and now you'll notice that that has actually disappeared and we've got no line there and you've got really really nice smooth lines now. So that's it for this one I hope you enjoyed that I hope you're able to follow along easily and like I said give me a like if you like this check out the links down below and I'll see you on the next one everyone. Thanks a lot bye bye.